I want to go across now to a man who comes from Haryana, interestingly was on a Congress stage saying I'm not in the Congress, I've spoken against the Congress, but I'm here to tell you why I think the Congress should be back. He also spoke of Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Jodo Yatra. Uh, Yogendra Yadav, who makes very clear he's not here to discuss the numbers, here in his capacity as a co-founder of the Swaraj India. Yogendra Ji, you're smiling. First, you're saying you don't believe the numbers. Obviously, you're excited by these numbers, but tell me this, because you said you don't want to discuss the numbers, so I'll park them on the side. What impact do you think the 8th of October and whatever results come from Jammu and Kashmir and Haryana could potentially have on the next round of assembly elections in Maharashtra and Jharkhand? Will some mahal carry forward or do you think these are completely different battles? Yogendra Yadav. Uh, thanks, Rahul. Uh... The smile that you referred to is just because I get to see an old friend like you. Uh, also, because uh, I've been saying for the last one month that uh, in Haryana, at least, there isn't much of a surprise or suspense. Uh, it's one of those elections whose result was known almost a year before the election. And the only question I've been saying is whether it's a Hawa or an Andi or a Tsunami. Uh, we don't quite know yet, so we would wait till the 8th. So nothing very, very surprising so far. On the impact, I think it's an important question, and it depends on how you read. Now, elections are politics of elections is over, but politics of interpretation may have just begun. Now, I think BJP spin doctors would already start spinning things because they knew they were going to lose. I suspect three kinds of arguments would come. One is, oh, it's only Jat and, uh, uh, and Dalit consolidation. Uh, second argument would be, oh, nothing to do with Mr. Modi, only a local anti incumbents. And third argument would be, look, BJP has retained its vote share. All the three arguments are either spurious or counterproductive. One, uh, it's, I have not yet seen your caste-wise breakup of your exit poll, etc. But my sense is no party can gain something like 44% votes or something of that kind that you have shown without gaining across the spectrum. So it's spurious. If it is not spurious, then the argument that a party has gained both among Jats and Dalits that already is an argument in favor of Congress. You know, if it was only Jats, then I could understand the argument. If a party is gaining both among Jats and Dalits, clearly it's a party that represents a rainbow coalition. So it's a counterproductive argument. Uh, to say that uh, uh, BJP is not with Mr. Modi, uh, it has nothing to do with Mr. Modi, but it's only local anti incumbency. And in the same breath to say, look, BJP has retained its vote share. Now, just put the two statements together and you would see how ridiculous these are. Because are we saying, that while Mr. Modi, under Mr. Modi's leadership, BJP loses 10 percentage point, in fact, more than 10, BJP loses between 2019 and 2024 Lok Sabha elections. In Haryana, BJP loses 14 percent, no, no, about 12 to 13 percent votes, but it's not losing in the assembly. So are we saying Mr. Modi is a liability in the national elections and the local leadership is not a liability? Is that the argument? Just, just look at how, how counterproductive these arguments would be. To my mind, we should move away from such counterproductive arguments and focus on the big things. The big questions would be, number one, uh, and that's the question all over the country people would uh, try and read. I'm sure once the results come, everyone would claim it's a semi-final, central government is about to collapse. I think those kind of things are spurious. Uh, the real serious question anyone would ask is, number one, whether the setback that BJP suffered in the parliamentary election, something that I called a moral and political defeat, was that a one-time event or was that a trend? That's a serious question everyone would be looking at. For that, Jammu and Kashmir would not be a very good case because it's not seen to be, because there's some very peculiarity involved there. But Haryana would indeed be seen as a case. And if BJP uh, loses substantially from where it was in the national election, in the parliamentary election, BJP was neck and neck with the Congress in Haryana. In fact, Congress was one point ahead if you take Ahmadi Party's votes there. No, but if can you I exclude Ahmadi Party's votes, to Congress challenge you for a moment and get you to respond. Yogendra Ji, there are two things which can be said against what you're saying. One, there is 10 years of anti incumbency. Look at the track record of Congress governments after five years of being in power. Whether it is Chhattisgarh or Rajasthan, they typically have tended to be voted out. 
The BJP has been in power in ten, for 10 years in a state which hasn't been an organic BJP catchment area. And therefore, after 10 years to be voted out, doesn't necessarily mean that it's because of the Modi factor, as you're suggesting, or that the Modi factor is completely decimated. Of course, he's a factor, maybe slightly diminished from his peak, but a factor nonetheless. But the, the party has also been in power for two terms, whereas Congress governments typically after one term have been voted out and voted out quite harshly by the Indian voter, whichever state this has been, whether Chhattisgarh or Rajasthan or several other states. How would you respond to that argument, Yoginderji? Uh, I would recall the fact that actually BJP was voted out in 2019 itself. It managed to come back to power in Haryana on the basis of a backroom deal, which was such a treacherous deal that it left people of Haryana seething and angry. Uh, the second thing is, uh, while I see that as a relevant factor for assessing Congress's government, and I think it's a very serious challenge that uh, the new Congress government, assuming that there's a Congress government, which is the most likely thing, this would be a very serious challenge for the Congress government. But I don't see this as much of a defense for the BJP because BJP government, um, the moment you say, oh, this is not a normal catchment area of BJP. So in a sense, anyone who makes that argument is beginning to concede that BJP all over the country is receding back to its core areas. That, Rahul, is exactly what analysts all over the country would be looking at. People may not be interested in Haryana as Haryana, but the question would be BJP, which had expanded so massively throughout the country, is it receding now back to its core areas? And secondly, was that setback only a momentary setback of one parliamentary election, or is it becoming a trend? From what you no, say, in both cases, the answer would be yes. It looks like a trend and BJP is shrinking. Uh, if those is, two is things it, are correct, then true? I don't think this adds up to a very good argument for the BJP. However, just to go back to the bigger picture, uh, to my mind, the big picture is a overall trend. BJP would be seen to be declining, especially in the Hindi heartland. And politics, uh, as uh, you would know, Rahul, I think your show was called Political Stock Exchange or something to that extent, something of that kind. Uh, politics is very much like stock market. Either you are up or you are down. And if you are down, then people start exiting, people start disinvesting their stocks. And this is the danger BJP faces. I'm not saying Haryana alone would be enough, but Haryana's but signal would be, okay, the stocks are down. And number two, the most immediate consequence would be that in Jharkhand and Maharashtra, it would affect the morale of BJP's workers and leaders. I'm not saying uh, the voters of Maharashtra and Jharkhand would be influenced by Haryana results. But the morale of the worker and leaders, that certainly would be, and that's a deeper impact that we should look at. But, but you see, uh, Yogendra Yadav, as you know better than anyone else, every state election is distinct to the other. Just 10 months ago, we had elections in other northern states. BJP swept Madhya Pradesh two-thirds, uh, came back to power in Chhattisgarh, and managed to wrest power in Rajasthan as well. Also all Hindi heartland states. Uh, then you had Lok Sabha where uh, the BJP still was the single largest while suffering blows in Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Haryana. I'm just trying to understand. You're saying that it is a declining stock at the moment if these Haryana results hold. The other question is, does that mean necessarily that the Congress is a rising stock or will Maharashtra and Jharkhand really test more than Haryana, if I may say so, whether what happened in 2024 is an aberration or whether we are seeing a clear decline in a dominant party. Would you press the pause button and wait for Maharashtra before you say it's a declining stock? Or are you saying it today itself? Uh, Rajdeep, in fact, I would go one step further and say that even Maharashtra and Jharkhand would not be a final conclusion. Uh, I'm just speaking right now, uh, and I would, my, I've been arguing that actually the fate of Mr. Modi's government will be decided in Bihar next year. If BJP and NDA loses Bihar, that would be the beginning of countdown of the BJP government. So I would not so easily write off the BJP even after if it loses even Maharashtra and Jharkhand. At the moment, I'm just speaking of perceptions. And as you know, so much of politics is about perceptions. In the battle of perceptions, and as you know, someone very carefully decided to detach Maharashtra and Jharkhand elections from Haryana. That someone officially is called the Election Commission of India but neither you or I would believe anything of that kind. So there was some political strategy there. That strategy hasn't worked. 
uh, in the battle of short term perceptions. And it's a short term perception battle, nothing more than that. In the battle of short term perceptions, BJP would be seen to be down. And if either Maharashtra, if Maharashtra also goes against the BJP, that perception would be intensified. If Jharkhand also goes, because that, to my mind, Jharkhand is the only real state where we don't know what the outcome might be. If Jharkhand goes against the BJP, a state which BJP has done very well in Lok Sabha, then of course it would become a very intense perception. Even then, I would not say that that is the uh, that uh, is the beginning of the end of Modi government or something of that kind. I, no, sir, I have a question. What, what, you know, since, just just yeah. to, for a moment, if if and, you know what would have changed? You know, perception is one thing. Perception sometimes mirrors reality as well. As I said, Dalit vote seems to be shifting away from the BJP. If these numbers hold clearly in Haryana, a large section would have shifted away from the BJP. What, according to you, is the change? Forget perception uh, for a moment. In reality, in reality, what has changed in 2024, according to you? Uh, if we look at Haryana, I think post Lok Sabha election, two, three, two things have happened. One is the overall perception of Congress being a possible and real alternative has strengthened. While BJP was already rejected, I've been saying, even a year ago in Haryana, everyone on the street knew BJP is on its way out. Uh, but for Congress to emerge as such a strong contender and for every other contender to be completely marginalized and sidelined is something that has happened post the parliamentary election. And in that Rahul Gandhi's rise in perception, Rahul Gandhi's emergence as someone who is now taken seriously as leader of the opposition, leader of a different kind of a voice, that may have contributed to Congress's success this time. But you, no. Yogendraji, one quick question to what you were saying, because I'll give you an anecdotal evidence, because I was on ground in Haryana for a fair point. And what you, I actually gathered was the Congress was a default option. You know, the vote was negative, that they have to remove them. It was not that they have to take them. It didn't seem, at least, as a pro-party vote. It seemed as a negative vote for the BJP, that And then the default setting became Congress. I partly agree with you, PTG, because uh, uh, when the results come, I'm sure Congress leaders will take all the credit and so on, and that's legitimate in a sense. Uh, but the simple fact is that almost a year ago, uh, more than a year ago, honestly, after the, uh, as I said, the government was born in bad faith, the second government of the BJP, Farmers' movement really broke the ethical, moral legitimacy of this government. And the wrestlers' protest was the real last straw. After that, the government lost its legitimacy for a very large section of Haryana's electorate. Uh, the question was, uh, yes, we want to throw BJP out, but who in, in the place of BJP? Uh, all I'm saying is that in that respect, Congress has gained very much. If you look at 2019 assembly elections in Haryana, put the votes of Congress and BJP together. That's hardly 65%. And uh, if we go by what your poll is showing, the numbers that I'm looking at the screen, uh, you are saying that this time Congress and BJP together will be more than 80%. So clearly, the, the non-BJP space, which was available, which was large, Congress has captured much of that non-BJP space. So Congress must have done something right to do that. Yogendraji, you said a moment before people. now that Bihar is the election that according to you will decide the future of Indian politics. Now in Bihar, someone you know well, Prashant Kishore has just started his new political formation. He seems to be drawing big crowds. He thinks he'll be king. Opinion is divided about whether he'll be vote cutter, kingmaker or king, or whether he'll be a non-starter. It is impossible to know for sure, but from what you understand of politics of India and of the state of Bihar, what's your best guess? Will Prashant Kishore cut the BJP's vote? Will he actually end up helping the BJP? How do you see the Prashant Kishore factor play out in the context of the fact that Nitish and BJP have now been in power and therefore will have a certain amount of anti-incumbency? Uh, Tejasvi and the RJD are waiting in the wings, hoping to catch in. Where does that X factor then, according to you, impact the next Bihar Assembly elections? 
Uh, Rahul, I know much less about Bihar than you think I do. Uh, I have not traveled on the ground and I try not to say too much about places that I have not traveled in. Uh, Prashant Kishore has clearly made a very important beginning uh, and uh, one can only wish him luck. Uh, he is up against two very large trends of Indian politics uh, and of Bihar politics. Uh, one is that creating a new political force unless it is based on caste and community, is extremely difficult. In the last 20, 30 years, we have seen only one or two instances of that. So that is the larger systemic uh, force against which, he is, uh, against which he stands. And second is that in Bihar, given the caste polarization of Bihar politics, to create a force which breaks that caste polarization uh, is going to be tough. Uh, both these things are tough, but in both of these, I would wish, I would like to wish him luck. Uh, if something like this happens, it would be uh, a great opening. Uh, my own uh, disappointment generally has been that it's very, very hard to start a new political force uh, in India today. If Prashant Kishore does it, uh, that would indeed be a new opening. That's all I can say. I would wish to travel more and be able I, to... Uh, one quick last question from... One, one quick last question from Yashwan Deshmukh. Uh, Yoganji, uh, purely uh, from the perspective of uh, uh, looking at the numbers, I mean, yes, MOTN has already, we have said that Bihar is going to be tricky for the BJP. Uh, we are looking now at the series of probably in, within 12 to 18 months, series of elections where the tables are going to turn probably against the BJP, barring a few exceptions like Jharkhand you just mentioned. My question is, do you see that as a firm transition thing nationally in favor of the opposition? Or do you fear that once coming into the power at the state level, the routine incumbency starts working against you as well? For sure, we have seen Congress winning assembly election, but losing that grip, uh, you know, in the Lok Sabha election, the moment they come in power, be it Himachal, be it Telangana, be it Karnataka. Uh, Yashwanti, uh, suppose we have a situation where Congress loses, let us say, three out of the four states currently, which looks more, most likely it could be four, it could be three. Uh, let us say it is followed by Aam Aadmi Party retaining them. No, BJP and loses BJP three out of four. No, no, we are saying BJP. No, you mean, no, no, just a minute. You, you mean because people will clip this. You mean BJP loses three out of four. Oh, sorry, that's what I meant. Uh, in the four states currently, let us say BJP loses three out of four states. Uh, Jharkhand one is not sure as of now. If BJP loses Jharkhand, that's actually very bad news for BJP. Let us say Amadmi Party manages to retain Delhi. And let us say, hypothetically, that uh, NDA loses Bihar to yeah. UPA, to, to, to India coalition. If that happens, then it would be very, very hard for BJP to pretend as if it's only state level and the incumbency and things of that kind. Clearly, number but one, the But the anecdotal evidence also the gives us, whenever they, you get into power and if the state governments are not working well, you tend to uh, gather enough anti-incumbency by the time the assembly, Lok Sabha election comes in. And we have seen that. I mean, barring the state of Tamil Nadu and West Bengal, where you have got really, really popular chief ministers at the moment, but the Congress ruled state governments uh, in the say, for example, in the recent, in the last two three years, be it Himachal, be it Telangana, be it Karnataka, they could not sustain the momentum. So, doesn't that bother you, uh, Yashwanti? Uh, the moment we say, okay, there's anti-incumbency, this affects all the governments and so on and so forth, then we act, it, BJP loses its biggest calling card. BJP's calling card was that this logic of anti-incumbency doesn't affect us. Look at Madhya Pradesh, look at Uttar Pradesh and so on. If it starts happening in all states, then BJP is like one more political party. Uh, and in that sense, then its stranglehold over national power uh, seriously suffers. And that's let's, what I meant, you know, the business of perception. You okay, and I can sit and look at vote swings. You and I can do some sophisticated analysis. But in the chai, wa, chai ki dukan, on the street, on uh, Rajdeep's plate when he travels, the message would be, Arey bhai, down. 
and this message that you are down exactly the message that you have in haryana today bhai down hai inki to sarkar jayengi ye to har ek ke that if that message goes across then it would be very very hard for mr modi to continue to be the prime minister because the bjp would then start feeling that they are dealing that someone who looked like their trump card is a liability Okay. Uh, and then all kinds of things start triggering in the party but that's hypothetical i'm not saying all that now, now, now you you said just, just doing some aag mein ghee ka kaam no, you 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 set create. the stage i think you set the stage which is interesting and remember also one of the slogans in haryana that seems to have worked in these numbers old bjp ja rahi hai congress aa rahi hai so bipolarity seems to have crept in at least in haryana and that bipolarity rahul could become a factor in states like maharashtra where you have lots of players if i want the government out Will I choose who is best placed to defeat the government? So I think that in that Nandi, sense, just, this okay, could become interesting. But Yogesh Yadav, you know. as always, good to have you with your wisdom, and I, you've set the stage for us to broaden it.